Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Jones, and joining me uh, on this on this call on this webinar is Brett and Andre from Kaleidoscape, and we're here to talk about Kaleidoscape's amazing, amazing products and their uh, and their product assortment, as well as all the things that make Kaleidoscape special. So, so um, I've known these gentlemen, like we said, for a while, and I have been lucky enough for them to. Um, have loaned me a Kaleidoscape. I actually did a review for projector reviews. So we had the opportunity to spend a lot of time utilizing the um, the players and the servers and things in our home. And once you have them, you understand why you pay a premium for them and what makes them special. So, so gentlemen, thank you for coming. For those who are just joining us, we'd like to thank our partner, um, um, our partners for coming and Sony for sponsoring the session so we could actually do this um, at no cost to you, the attendees. And, um, and so we like to thank them for their support as well. So to get started, let's talk about the history of Kaleidoscapes. Can you guys tell me a little bit about the company and how it got started? Sure. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, again, Kaleidoscape has been around for uh, just almost uh, 20 years, actually. So we're, we're just coming up in, in 2021. So that'll be a, a nice, uh, you know, birthday for us. Um, but, you know, again, it really started with, uh, you know, lovers of, of movies, you know, and, and people that, you know, really, again, wanted to be able to create a, a better experience, you know, for, for uh you know, for, for the consumer. And, you know, obviously at that point we didn't have streamers. <laughs> so, you know, things were, were coming out, you know, when you go way back when you've got the starting of DVD, uh, you know, so 480p quality, um, you know, and so Kaleidoscape is, has really been there, um, you know, building source content and creating a, a, a beautiful experience and a refined experience, um, you know, again, for, for almost 20 years now. Yeah, and it seems like every, if you go to any trade show um, and you look at any demo space the players that are used are kaleidoscapes if you if you look at some of the best home theaters out there where the customer is looking for the ultimate in reliability and consistency you will see kaleidoscapes my personal job here as the tech i am the technical editor for projector reviews having a kaleidoscape means that whenever i I play a movie. I on anybody else, any projector. I know that the performance and the and what I'm getting is consistent. I can't really say that with a streaming service. There's some great streaming devices out there, but when my daughter and my son are down there playing Halo on their game systems, and my wife is on a video conference uh, late at night, that could affect my my um the consistency and the and the performance and i know when i when i when i fire up my kaleidoscape i am always going to get a consistent high quality ultra high quality picture so yes. you've always been about downloads can you talk about why you chose to be focused on downloads instead of streaming sure absolutely so you know and, and again you were you were mentioning a, a few minutes ago when you go to a trade show uh, or even really, if you just go to any any manufacturers, you know, demo rooms, uh, you know, Kaleidoscape is generally always there. And and like you said, that's because it's a consistent performance. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with your question of you know streaming versus download. So you know, we consider ourselves an, an online platform. You know, we we don't require a, obviously a, a physical disc to to come in to be able to use it. But those movies are are fully downloaded. You know, onto our server. Um, you know, our, our players like our Strato S have either six terabytes or 12 terabytes. Um, our Terra servers, you know, used for, for larger systems or multi-room uh, have 24 or 40 terabytes. And so that's really allowing, you know, the movie lovers to, to put in, uh, you know, hundreds of movies, you know, so they can truly put in their whole collection in there. But by downloading it, we're going to make sure that we get full bandwidth. So if you look at streaming services and, and streamers are great, you know, they're, they're not going away. You know, there's so much content out there, uh, you know, that those streaming services are always going to be required. But what we see a lot of times is, you know, they're playing the, the numbers game. They're looking at mm -hmm. millions of users. Uh, like you said, you know, especially nowadays with people at home, um, you know, they want to use as little bandwidth as possible so that they don't have interruptions for buffering. 
Uh, and I think we've, we've all seen those things anyways, um, but it's an important piece in there. And so typically, you know, most streamers are, are only bringing across, you know, maybe eight to 10, uh, you know, megabytes for, for general content and up mm -hmm. to maybe 25 for, um, you know, for 4K content. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, they're, they're compressing that video and audio signal uh, mm -hmm. in, in order to be able to make it reliable. You know, and so what we do instead in order to get the reliability, but also the quality side, uh, you know, it's, it's really being able to, to download that movie. So if you look at what we're kind of, you know, putting through, obviously it's not mm -hmm. streaming, but that data mm -hmm. is, is going across for your movie. Mm -hmm. We're running in, in the 100 to 125 megabyte range. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, you're just seeing times over more, typically four to 12 times the amount of data bandwidth. Um, that's required, and and that's resulting in far less compression. Um, you know, the the only online lossless audio you know available. Um, you know, and that's going to mean that the the end user, whether it's a manufacturer um, mm -hmm. or the or the consumer, you know, is is mm -hmm. going to to get the best picture and audio quality available. Yeah. So the file sizes are bigger. So and downloading means it, it's you know you're trying you, as fast as internet's coming. It's not that fast yet. Um, <laughs> the big thing that I that I remember that that has been a big change is before, if I wanted to download a Kaleidos uh, a, a movie on a Kaleidoscape, five six years ago, it was a it was a four hour process. Sure. You know, you'd have to wait four three four five hours. Actually, when they first came out, a lot longer than that to <laughs> to, to, uh, to get a movie. But now, with people having well over the yeah, 200, 300, one gig much much faster download speeds now i've noticed that if i want to order a movie you can we decide you want to watch movie i can order it while i'm while we're cooking dinner yeah. or uh, while we're eating dinner and by the time i clean the di I, I get done eating and doing all the dishes the movie is already ready um, for playback so consistent it's getting a lot faster to download those i always try to ask you guys how many will fit on a six terabyte or Strata S, and what do you guys always tell me? We 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 can we can share that in there. So um, you know, obviously, you know, movie to movie is gonna is gonna raise, right? You know, if I take a, a longer movie like like Endgame as an example, um, you know, a uh, the the disc. If I look at a 4K disc, it's gonna be around 95, 96 gigs. Um, mm -hmm. you know, because a, a 4K disc has um you know, a, a cap, a uh, hundred gigs, you know, a Blu-ray disc has 50 gigs. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't have that, that, that cap. So, you know, we're able to go, ours is actually over, over 106 gigs. So, mm -hmm. um, obviously, like you said, that, that takes, you know, some storage space. Um, but if we look at in general, um, a six terabyte is going to get somewhere conservatively, we'll say 90, cause we don't know exactly how many movies, um, you know, but the, the beauty of, of a menu system is you go through, you know, and you know, for yours, you can actually see how much space and how many movies it assumes that you're going to, to be able to have left on, on your hard drive. So, yes. And that's, and that's a big point. If we can go in here on the unit itself and I can see under, if I go here, I can actually go down to, let's see, we're we going to go down to, um, uh, system, right? Is it system? Yep. Okay. And I can see. Uh, how many downloads I have, how much content I have, and how much available storage. You'll notice that um, it varies, and that's why I always I was trying to throw um, Brent oh, a yeah. softball that it varies <laughs> based on, like he said, the length of the movie and the quality of the movie. If you're looking, I mean, so it's a so if you have a combination of of HDR 4K movies, HD movies and even some older standard definition movies, the file sizes can change. So it's kind of hard to give you a number, you know, yeah. because it all depends on a lot of different variables. So, yep. you know, you and, have a bigger and, collection, buy a bigger player. This is yeah, the way it that, is, right? That's right. Yeah, no, and, and you know, usually when, when you look in that number, you know, that, that uh, UHD movie or number and the, and the Blu-ray movie number are, you know, fairly close. Um, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, for most people nowadays, they may have some SD movies because there's just mm -hmm. something that hasn't been made in Blu-ray. Um, uh, mm -hmm. but obviously we don't see too many people downloading too many, you know, DVD quality 480p movies nowadays. Um, exactly. you know, usually most of them are going to be in, in Blu-ray if there's no 4k, 
And then obviously, you know, we want to show off on our projectors and our systems. So, um, you know, being able to get a, a true 4K, you know, an Atmo sound and everything else is going to be what, what most users want. Um, you know, we see our, our average user. Uh, you know, if we look at the, the top half and up, we, they, each person has, you know, around 300 or more discs. Mm -hmm. um, our top 10% of users uh, have well more than 1,000 discs. So, you know, again, you just, people love the interface and kind of like you talked about before, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, sometimes people don't think about, you know, they, they look at it and it's obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's not an inexpensive item, um, you know, and, and just like if we're talking speakers or projectors or, you know, anything else in there, uh, you know, everybody has a different budget, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and again, everybody, if you enjoy your system, that's, that's what's most important. Uh, but I think we we often get overlooked sometimes as that luxury piece only designed for that you know ultra high end theater mm -hmm. and you know as you talked about and as we look and we'll talk about you know quality and the rest mm -hmm. uh, you know really it's 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 a product that's about luxury and and simplistic and refined experience but it's also about that performance you know and and again there's there's no better performance uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit than what you're going to get out of a flight escape yeah. unit um you know versus streaming you know or or even disc based if you're if you're a hardcore collector and you're building a nice theater with a five or ten thousand dollar projector and and a good surround sound system to have this be your main source it it's in a it's in alignment with with sure. what that system would actually be now movies um how do we get the movies what's the um so so how does that work because before, you used to have a little box where you have to put my movie in, yeah. and it would actually burn my movie into storage. But you, but now it's it's pretty much um, a really good movie store. So you want to talk yeah. about that a little bit? Absolutely. So so yeah, you know, as you mentioned, we we've obviously been moving over in the last couple of years, um, and, and really now, uh, you know, moving forward, uh, you know, is it, it's all about you know our, our strata unit. So in our in our past, we had the ability to rip DVDs or Blu-ray storage, uh, you know, which was a requirement from there, um, you know, but now we, we have the, the ability for you to basically search through um, over 11,000 movies, over 11,500 movies actually now, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, and, and over a thousand of those are actually in, uh, you know, 4K, you know, UHD or HDR and better, mm -hmm. um, you know, quality. So, you know, again, the, the, you know, being able to search through here, uh, it's, a, it's a great user interface. You can see as you have here on the screen, uh, you know, you can filter things by popular, newest releases, uh, even a Rotten Tomato score. So, you know, if you want to see what's, what's kind of in there, um, UHD, HDR, Atmos, you know, there's, there's a ton of filters that you're able to throw in there, um, you know, to, to help you search. And then obviously in that, in that upper right corner, um, you know, if you want to search for a particular movie, um, you can search that and pull it right up. And then otherwise, if you go into that, the, the movie section, the TV mm -hmm. section or the collection, you'll see those up towards the top of the menu. Mm -hmm. um, then you're able to, to kind of look by genres, right? You yes. know, if, if I, you know, it's, it's, it's day night, you know, and, and I want to have something a little, you know, a horror movie or uh, I need an action movie or, you know, a day night movie. Uh, you know, all those options are in there. And I think that's really the beauty of this system is that, um, you know, all those movies, you know, the, the streaming services, like I said, while, while they have their place, nobody has the collection of movies, uh, you know, that Kaleidoscape has from this perspective. And so, you know, again, this is just the, uh, you know, it's, it's the ultimate way to, to be able to search and, and it's ultra intuitive. So yeah. whether you're the person who uses it all the time, or, uh, you know, you're somebody, you should just be able to walk right up to it, right? Grab the remote, um, you know, you can access it on the TV. Um, obviously, as, as you have it in, in your projection system now and, and use the Kaleidoscape remote, if you have a control system, uh, you know, we partner with pretty much every control system out there, you know, so you're able to control it that way. Um, and then obviously, as a lot of people are using, you know, tablets, iOS and Android, uh, you know, PC, Mac, you know, you have that capability of accessing it from the browser. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of like you mentioned about your dinner, I find because I'm always talking with dealers and end users, somebody will always come up with some, some new movie that, you know, that they just saw or a great demo experience. And so I find myself at work, uh, you know, pulling up the browser, uh, you know, and, and going through the movies and then downloading it. And similar to what you said, by the time I get home, that movie's already there, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, as we talked about, timing uh you know before 
you know, as you get into one gig speeds, which more and more people are, you know, getting, or, you know, let's even say 200 and, and 500 megs and up, you know, on, on a Terra with gig speed, you can download a 4K movie in about 12 minutes. So, mm -hmm. you know, really you are getting to that point where you can just think about the movie you want, put it on there, and a couple minutes later, you know, you're, you're really ready to go and sit down and watch it. Yes. So eventually we'll get to the pricing of the units themselves, but sure. what do the movies normally run? If I uh, want a so, movie or a TV show, a TV show. Sure. So, so it depends. Um, obviously just, you know, like any 4k content or DVDs that, that you would find in the store, uh, or online from streaming, the, the movies range that depending on, you know, is it a new release by the, by the movie studio? Um, uh, but typically what we find, and, and we have a lot of movies that, that end up, you know, that, that we'll put on sale or on special. So like I said, we, we try to do that as well. So, you know, typically we'll see movies in that 15 to to 30, $36 range at the high end. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of movies in there, including your Disney's and your Marvel movies and all those kinds of things typically run in that 20 to $26 range. In addition to that, what we also have are, are abilities to, to do upgrades. So mm -hmm. for a lot of people, they may have, uh, I know for myself, I have about 600 movies on disc that I've had through the years. You know, some of them you watch occasionally, so, you know, you don't need it in super high quality. But what happens is if you have that in, let's say an old premiere system, you can actually convert those to digital. And we range between, you know, $3, you know, to convert it into a, a DVD quality you know, to, to typically $8.99 to have it into a Blu-ray and a little bit higher for 4K. So you've got a lot of different ways if there's existing movies that you have, but, you know, you want to be able to watch it in 4K because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've upgraded your projector and, and all your other pieces, then, uh, you know, we've, we've got a lot of great ways for people to not just buy new movies, um, but to also, you know, kind of uh, upgrade their, uh, you know, their, their current stash of movies as well. Yeah, because the upgrade thing is kind of, is kind of cool. Because it, one thing about, about Kaleidoscape is they have the largest collection. Uh, if you're looking for 4K or HDR, a lot of times you can't find it on disc or find it as a streaming option. So it, it may be available here, but you say, man, I bought it. How many versions of Sp of Star Wars do I have to buy? You know, I bought it on VCR, I bought it on this, I bought it with Dolby, with Dolby Digital, I bought it Dolby Atmos, I bought it, you know. So being able to actually um, have that upgrade path is cool. So is that new, the upgrade path thing? Is that kind of a newer thing that you guys started off? Yeah, it's, it's a newer thing. You know, as, as we came out with, with our Strato line, um, you know, really, again, the goal was you know, let's let's create the, the best possible experience. You know, and, mm -hmm. and as we look at products like like our Strato products, uh, there's no optical drives, right? Same thing as you mm -hmm. find in your laptops nowadays and, and things like that. There's just there's not as much of a need for it. You know, and obviously mm -hmm. in this case, because we're converting to digital. So yeah, you know, we we've had that option for for a few years and, and it's great for you know for clients as they're trying to upgrade that system, maybe mm -hmm. get rid of that uh you know uh you know disc vaults you know that they've had for years and, and be able to convert those over so it's been there for a little while and then it's it's also helped us by removing you know more of those failure points uh you know like an optical drive you know we're able to to get to the point now where you know a, a strato product uh or a terra you know anything in that line has basically a, a less than one quarter of one percent failure rate so these mm -hmm. things are rock solid uh you know you, you put it in it's, you know, it's all hard drive based, it's all download based, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to have any of those issues that, uh, you know, that, that are there with disk based systems. Okay, so let's talk about, so you said that the Strata, the Strato S, there's two oh. sizes, right? Um, Correct. Six and 12. Yep. And what are the retail pricing for those? Sure. So on a Strato S six terabyte, uh, you're looking at a $6,000 MSRP. And on the 12 terabyte, you're looking at a $9,000 MSRP. Right. Okay. And um, and a lot of that has to do the the big jump in price, like the $3,000, is you guys are using high quality hard drives. And, yes. And and you you have a whole bunch your high libraries on there, so you want to make sure that your library is um that the that goes back to that reliability. You ever pick one of these things up? When they sent me this the unit, I think I have a 12 terabyte sample. It is deceivingly heavy yes, or shockingly yes. heavy for as how compact it appears. So I remember when they first came out, you they used to be like maybe two rack mounts uh -huh. and now it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which makes it a lot easier to get into into your AV rack as well. Instead of these before it was like the play the hard drive thing and then the secondary it was it was it was a it was an array 
now it's just a very clean box that can pretty much fit anywhere. Yeah. No, and that's exactly right. So yeah, the, the Strato S units are, are basically one, one RU high. So, you know, anybody, if it's going into a rack mount, you know, again, it's, it's nice and small, doesn't take up as much space. And, and again, to be able to get in your case, like you said, 12 terabytes, <laughs> you know, a few hundred movies in there, uh, you know, where in the past you'd have to have a, a huge library of DVDs or, uh, you know, multiple changers, you know, again, is, is a great way to, to be able to upgrade that. And so, yes. you know, and, and like you said, you know, as we look at our, at our hard drives, you know, our, our operations team, the manufacturing team, you know, really went all out to make sure that we were buying the best hard drives because mm -hmm. like you said, there, there's nothing worse than having a hard drive fail, right? We've seen them in our laptops. We've seen them in, you know, in, in a variety mm -hmm. of places. We want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So, you yeah. know, again, <laughs> it is a little yeah. bit more expensive than your basic hard drive, but that's because the quality is yeah. there and that's what helps us get to those, exactly. you know, pretty, pretty much, uh, you know, unknown return rates. Yeah, exactly. Because the Murphy's Law says if it's going to fail, it's going to fail on Thanksgiving or That's Christmas exciting. when the family's over. So if you look at the if you look at the chassis, it's very simple. There's not a lot going on in the back. There's two HDMIs. What is that for in case you have an older receiver? Is yeah, that so you so you can actually use that to, to be able to get you know higher codecs out from a from a music standpoint. So if you if you need to be able to use that and then most are obviously using the the video on the left is going to do video, you know, video and audio if you're connecting it into an AVR, your processing system, you know, or or even a TV. Yeah, and like like I have a actual home theater, but I also in my in my little lab slash office, I'm using um I'm using a sound bar. It doesn't have video switching, so having that second HDMI, or the optical and the coax is just make sure that it works for a variety of different applications. Yeah. And I mean, we like we that. want pe people love their legacy systems, right? And so yeah. while obviously we're we're running to the bleeding edge of how much high quality can we get out there with 4K and and everything mm -hmm. else. We want to make sure that if, you know, again, somebody has a slightly older system that, that we're able to support those legacy systems, you know, as, as, as well. It's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a good investment. So we want to make sure it works with everything they need. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give you a hard question. Okay. What if I want to expand my, what happens if 12 terabytes is not enough or I bought I, a six and now I need, now I need nine. What, 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 what can I do? What can sure. I do? So, so we do have options in that. That was actually, it's funny, uh, about an hour ago, I was just chatting with a dealer who sold. And, and I think a lot of times people, they get started with the six terabyte because um, again, they, you know, they, they look at it, if they've never used a Kaleidoscape before, uh, you know, they're, they're unsure. It's not a $200 DVD player that, you know, doesn't really matter or a, or a basic streamer, uh, you know, it's an investment. And so, but what we find is that once they start using it, they love it. And like you said, they start filling it up quickly. Uh, and so, you know, as an example, we, I, I had a, a, a dealer that just emailed me, like said about an hour ago and, you know, he goes, Hey, I've got a six terabyte clients, you know, basically filled up. Is it a Terra? What do we go to? And so, you know, basically you, you have a few different options. You you mm -hmm. can go with the Terra uh, and those Terra products are great. Uh, basically it's a it's a server only, so it doesn't have a player. A Strat OS is a player and a server because it has the hard drives, but it is a player. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The Terra is basically a 24 terabyte and a 40 terabyte, you know, server. And so in that case, you can connect that to your Strato the Strato can access any movies that are on the Strato S's hard drive, but then it's also going to be able to pull over the network from that mm -hmm. Terra that you're kind of pointing out there. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, a great way to be able to add more storage to, you know, to, to the user as they, mm -hmm. as they realize how much they love it and continue to add movies over the years. The other thing, too, is multiple zones. So you could use an S to feed the Strata C is almost like a multi-zone player, but it doesn't have any hard drives in it. What does it retail for? It retails for so that one retails for for five thousand dollars because uh, there's no there's no hard drives in it because there's um, no hard drives in there. So, okay. so yeah, so same same system. Um, you know, again, you know, all the processing and everything else, you know, that that's required in there. Um, but yeah, like, like you mentioned, so, so you can run it in a few different ways. So mm -hmm. uh, let's say you started with the Strat OS, you know, in a six mm -hmm. terabyte or 12 terabyte, like you talked about before, and you realize, you know, I have this in my, in my theater, in my media room, uh, but maybe I want to, you know, I'm realizing I, I enjoy it. I'm using it a lot. I want to be able to access it in the family room or master bedroom. Your C is your upgrade path to that. So you can mm -hmm. take that Strat OS, add a C. 
um, and you can start playing into two zones. And again, they're basically going to share the hard drives uh, and storage space that that's in the Strato S. You can also take two Strato S's. So a lot of times people, like you said as well, you know, maybe they, they need some more storage space. Again, they're realizing that they're using it more. So, you know, rather than just going with the Terra, which would be great if you were just accessing it in the one room, they can actually put two Stratos. So you could put maybe again, this time you don't want to have the same issue. So you buy a, a 12 terabyte this time. Um, now you've got the 12 terabytes and the six terabytes. And again, they're sharing content. So it's, it's really easy no matter what you have. All the movies are accessed through one simple, you know, easy to use menu system, but are pulling from both places. And okay. then if you're going past two zones, you know, that's really where you do need to step into a Terra. So at yeah. that point, you've got the Terra for your storage. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you can always combine a Terra and a Strato if you want to, but otherwise the Terra and the Strato C uh, is the perfect way to do it because you put a Strato C in each room or, uh, you know, you had a picture a second ago, you can obviously put them in a rack mount for essentially mm -hmm. Yeah. System, and all of those are going to basically pull over the network from from the Terra. Yeah. So if you have like a hardcore video distribution system, you could put that's five zones right there that, of, five, um, of five HDR, zones, absolutely. five zones of HDR Blu-ray quality. So basically, if we look at a Strata S, it is a player first, a server second. The uh, so it can serve a client like a Strata C, but yeah. not a lot of them, like maybe so, one. Yeah, okay. so you can do two, two zones on a Strata S and okay. okay. Um, if you have a, if you, or if you want someone that wants multiple clients, that's where the Terra comes in. Because multiple clients means mul that you probably, those clients probably want more movies anyway. And, yep. uh, and a, a, a Terra is a server. And it has no player capabilities. It is just to feed um, content to Strata C's and Strata S's, correct? You, you got it. And, you know, and the processing power in that Terra um, is just a lot stronger and faster as well. So like we said, you know, a, a Strata S, uh, great for a single zone, great for two zones by adding another Strata S or a Strata C. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's really not designed to do more than two zones simultaneously. So mm -hmm. a Terra in, you know, by comparison, is able to do 10 streams simultaneously. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, as, as you imagine, you know, not everybody's gonna need that many, but they're, they're absolutely homes, uh, you know, or in the marine industry where they do. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they wanna make sure that, you know, every bedroom has it and, and the family room and the, you know, living room and the theater room, um, you know, then we wanna make sure that we have systems that can grow and scale properly with mm -hmm. whatever the client's needs are. And that's, that's really the thing is, we've got that base system in the Strato S, amazing mm -hmm. performance for, you know, for that single zone, but then we have the ability to do 10 zones or more, you know, 10 simultaneously, and then we can obviously, you know, even grow from there. Yeah, and, and like I said, there's a reason why when you look at the nicest home theaters, yachts, trade shows, demo rooms at retail spaces, you see them because of the quality and the consistency yep. of, the, of it. And the other, Big, 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 big thing is user interface. Um, yes. I could, if there's enough guys out there that can figure out a way to take a Blu-ray and um, 4K Blu-ray and hack it and and build a media PC and and run it on some crazy. I'm gonna run it on on a uh, a version of Plex that is, you know, some crazy thing, right? And it it, it could work and it could probably look pretty good, but you most likely your wife can't use it or your spouse can't use it or your kids can't use it or your mom can't use it. So a lot of this too has to do with the, the interface. One thing I've learned from being in consumer electronics for a while is I don't care how good the performance is, if it's too complex or it's too intimidating the, and the rest of the family's not going to use it, it, it loses a lot of its value. And paying a little bit more for something that the entire family can utilize is is big. And that's what I, I've always liked about the interface. I mean, if you look at the store here, the store is easy to follow, easy to shop. I go in, I pick a movie, I, I pick it. I want to find out about that TV show or whatever. The other thing that I really like that you guys have done forever is if I pick something, it kind of says, okay, based on your selection, it kind of, re I love how it always rearranges the order of content based on on things that you make that are kind of similar to that particular thing. So if I have a large library and I go over and I grab something like the Avengers here, 
if I go back into the regular library after I purchase something uh, here and I go pick um, something like La La Land, it's going to say, hey, you're probably looking for stuff that are that's music and movie related. And it, that's always been um, really, really, a really, really cool thing. And, and it's very visual and it always works. I put the button, it comes up. It, um, there is no rebooting my computer or, or oh, I, for, um, I forgot to turn the hard drive. I forgot, I'm not running the proper program and I don't have to worry about that. If I want a movie or somebody in the family wants a movie, they just hit, they just drag it over and find a movie they want and hit play, you know? Sure. And, and I think that is, that is really, really, really cool. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the, you know, one of the key pieces in there. And, you know, there's, 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 a, you know, a few key points in there. We were talking about movie selection, obviously, um, you know, that's great. You know, I, I, again, as, as we mentioned, we have, you know, a, a thousand, um, you know, 4K UHD movies. Uh, we also have in that, in that mix, you know, 400 of those movies aren't available in 4K on disc at all. So, you know, again, that number is constantly shifting back and forth. You know, but again, it, it goes to show how we're working with the movie studios to really make sure that, you know, be it brand new content or older content that, you know, that, that clients love, you know, that we're constantly working to make sure that we're getting that in the highest quality content that's out there. And then, you know, like you mentioned, you know, there's nothing worse than building a home theater or a media room, um, you know, but everything's so complex and unintuitive that, you know, frankly, only the person uh, who built it knows how to get it to work, right? You know, and, and that's when systems stop getting used, um, you know, family members don't like it, you know, and, and so, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, we believe the, the experience believe, you know, begins, you know, even before the title sequence, right? So just as you showed in the menu system, you know, our on-screen display, you know, beautiful cover art in 4k quality, uh, it's intuitive for anybody, you know, be it, be it again, a, a lover of technology or somebody who just wants to be able to scan through, watch the movies, your kids. You know, there's plenty of options to be able to do that. And then again, you can use it with your remote, an app, you know, everything looks very much the same. So whether you're in the browser, whether you're in the, you know, an app on your phone or a tablet, or whether you're, you know, looking at the, the, the TV screen or, or your projector screen, um, you know, they all have that same look and feel that's, again, going to mean that it's easier for people to use. Yeah. And I like that too. It does, like you said, that same look and feel. Yep. So there's been times where we've been at trade shows or we've been doing a dealer event and we're like, man, this is the scene that I really love. And this, and this, we'd order them while we were there to get it. And, and the other thing too, that, I, that this me being the total geek that I am, I have, um, I have a day job and a, and a, and a, and a night job. And both of them require the ability to look at good quality audio and video. And I, um, sometimes my day job, we do a lot of trade shows. And sometimes my night job, I sit there and look at people at trade shows. So either way, I'm looking at kaleidoscapes. And one thing I like about them is the, the ability to do those to make scenes. Because yes. if you have a nice system, you always have your buddy come over and he's like, show me what you got. You know, so you could make, a, and I love being able to just go in and if I pick a, if, and I pick a movie, and I can actually go in and 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 set up like scenes, my favorite scenes that I want to play for my friends. And I can even put those scenes in a collection, so I can hit a button and walk away and yep. have the and just give them a, oh, you like you like shoot 'em ups. Here's John Wick, John Wick followed by Deadpool, and uh, and actually have the whole demo go. And I I love that. And for me as a reviewer, it makes it really easy because I know what scenes I want to look at. So, and I don't have to go grab 35 discs and go through the FBI warnings and 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 it's not the beginning of a chapter and fast forward to find the right position versus just putting them in here and now I can sit I can sit here now and just run through the scenes that I use that um to check HDR or 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 even or sound quality or or anything else so I really 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 for me um, selfishly, I I love it as um, as that kind of tool. So uh, you know, similarly, Phil, I I think that's probably obviously the quality and all these pieces are amazing, but that's probably one of my favorite features because, mm -hmm. like you said, coming from you know from a, a dealer standpoint, coming from a, a demo standpoint, uh, or even you know just a, an average user who, like you said, you know we build these systems, we love building them, we love watching them ourselves. But yeah, you know we invest a, a lot of time and often a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, you know, building and then rebuilding and upgrading our systems, we want to show it off, 
you know, and, and, okay. and it is difficult, you know, when you have discs. And I have my favorite DVD movies. And mm-hmm. I think it's something that not a lot of people realize is an option that, you know, mm-hmm. we actually create and it's it's literally a team that's that's here in this building in Mountain View with me. Mm-hmm. So they actually go movie by movie and we find the favorite scenes. And it's not just, uh, you know, track forward features like you'd have on a on a disc. We actually find those those favorite scenes. Yeah, you got them up right there. Um, I'll go ahead and turn my video off so we can see that big. But, you know, those those options to be able to look through those favorite scenes. These are the scenes that you're going to want to show. These are the things that are going to show off the, you know, the audio and the video quality that you have in there. But even more than that, if you want to create your own. So let's say we have a scene in there and you're like, you know, I really like it 30 seconds earlier or two minutes later. You can actually build your own scenes in there. And and those are going to be tied in as favorites. And so you build them. It takes literally a minute to be able to build. um, And it's there. And then, like you said, you can chain multiple scenes together from different Mm -hmm. movies so Mm -hmm. you know again you can take a a genre or you can even switch back and forth so like i said you can start with the shoot 'em up with the john wick you know a a race scene like in in ready player one and then you can move into adele or planet earth or you know and and show off a variety of different things so Mm -hmm. uh you know whether they're your you know your friends and family are coming over or Mm -hmm. whether you're a a professional you know integrator and, and you're using this as a demo piece you know, you really have a, a, a system to be able to, to have a, a great fluid flow that really is, is not available on streaming and is not available with discs either. Yeah, the, the interface is one of the main reasons why it's worth what it is. It's just a, it's just a pleasure to, to, to use. Uh, I can't tell you how, how many hours it cut down on, on trade show setup because I didn't have to, um, I didn't, Instead of just running around, we just basically start. Uh, we we do it. We take the Kaleidoscape recommended stuff that you guys have already done, and we go. We take the movies and we play those scenes, and we go. I like that one. And that's then right. and then so a lot of times we can we can. That's why a lot of times you go to trade shows, you'll see the same force <laughs> once going through because everybody because you can say up oh, they're playing. You know who does we you know you know Ali Bar serves because that's the one that that Kaleidoscape had, had selected as I wanted to kick butt demos. That's kind of a fun job there, Brett, sitting here. I'm going to watch movies all day and then determine <laughs> which scene is the best scene, and you you're going to pay me for it. That's, nobody that's nobody told game. me. Nobody told me, Phil, that that was the option, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> you know, they brought me in for, for dealer and client education and to build out a lot of this stuff. And, uh, yeah, nobody told me that I could watch movies. And we literally have people – that you know, as, as we're creating those transfers, we get the mm-hmm. the full mezzanine file from the movie studios, and mm-hmm. we want to make sure that as we put it through our proprietary process, that mm-hmm. every, every bit in video is correct, and you know, and every sound mm-hmm. and audio is correct. Um, mm-hmm. So we actually have we have rooms that are all darkened, you know, and uh, you know, and people are in there just watching movies, and we've got other people on our team that are finding those favorite scenes. So yeah, imagine you get to watch your favorite movies over and over to find just that right you know bracket of time. Uh, you know, to be able to watch, you know, and, and yeah. like you said, you know, any major manufacturer that you go to be a trade show or in their, you know, in, in their showrooms, 90% of the time they're, they're using a Kaleidoscape system. And that's because okay. they know if they're, if they're demoing, you know, be it to a, a dealer or to their mm-hmm. end user, the quality matters, you know, and they, they want to be able to show off their equipment, their projector, their speakers, mm-hmm. their whatever it is, uh, you know, to the best of its ability. And, you know, it's, it's Kaleidoscape, you know, so again, if you look at it the same way as a, as an end user, even for myself, you know, if I'm watching movies, you know, if those manufacturers that I trust are using it, doesn't it make sense that I want that same quality, you know, and that same ease of use, you know, when I'm trying to use it. And, and again, that's the benefit of, of really having the, you know, the download is that you can literally take that, that one RU chassis Mm -hmm. and you can bring it with you wherever you want. The movies are already there. So, you know, there's, exactly. there's no downloading, there's no nothing else to do. So it's, it's quick and easy and up and running, uh, you know, in, in five minutes, basically. Okay. Okay. So here comes some hard questions. You ready? Okay. Okay. Dolby Vision. Yes. When? Hi. Uh, <laughs> you know, it is, it is not something, honestly, that, that's on the roadmap. Um, obviously UHD, HDR, you know, all those pieces are there. So, you know, we always, we, we value the feedback, you know, we're, we're always looking at new codecs and, and things to be able to do. Uh, it is not, uh, you know, honestly though, in a roadmap where I can give you a date on it yet. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Because to be honest with you, there's no projectors, very, 
I, I don't know any uh, major manufacturer that supports um, projector manufacturer supports Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision, the the base layer of Dolby Vision is ST twenty uh, ST twenty eighty four or 24, 24, that's correct, um, or PQ. So, and most of the newer, better projectors by companies like Sony and JVC and TVs like LG and Sony and stuff can dynam dynamically measure metadata anyway, so it can generate the information itself. So, so it'd be nice, because people always want to know, can you do it? But, um, but that's one question. Um, so here's another hard question. Okay. Uh, do you, you support Dolby Atmos? Correct. Yes. DTS DTS X. Um, DTS X. We hold on. I'm going to jump back into to Andre real quick. Because Andre yes. could pop up. And, yes. Yeah. DTS X. Actually, DTS X means you get DTS X Pro because it's the same thing. Um, IMAX enhanced. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. <laughs> we Andre. <laughs> we can do IMAX and Ants. So the, there's nothing different about the the delivery package for IMAX and Ants, so it's totally possible for us to do that. Uh, we it's just a licensing be, uh, on the movie, right? Exactly. Okay, because it is it's it's a D IMAX enhance is a DTS X surround base is a surround layer or base layer, and then um, and then it's just different video uh, treatment. And a slightly different aspect ratio, so it's possible. It's just I'm just waiting for the movies to show up with that. We'd like to thank Andre, and we'd like to thank Brett from Kaleidoscape, and of course we'd like to thank our sponsor Sony because their reason why we could do this is because they actually um, have helped uh, support. Andre, cool. always a pleasure. Brett, next I'm looking for that next trade show, and that's um, right. Yeah, and maybe one day I'll bring I'll give you back your Kaleidoscape. <laughs> All well, right. it looks so like we... it's getting good use for now, Phil. So thank you very <laughs> exactly. much for the time. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate, you know, all, all the viewers on here. Bye, Andre. Bye, um, everybody. Hey, Scott. Have fun. Yeah. Oh, bye, everybody.